Okay, it is uh, 5-25-2022, 20, and my, my big brother, Bill, and I are talking about uh, go-karts. Uh, Bill built a go-kart out of, out of thin air, out of, um, I don't know how he did it, but he built a go-kart, and I think the, a big part of the engine, too. So uh, this is uh, his memory and, and a little bit of my memories of, of, yeah. that, uh, of that event, which uh, took place in uh, when I was a little boy and Bill was a, a young man. And there you go, Bill. Okay, and the time and date is? Oh, it's uh, 5-25-2022. Uh -huh. and, and uh, you got it. And when, uh, uh, what period are we, when does the, uh, the, when did the go-kart appear? Yeah, in, in our, in our history, when does it first show up? Yes, well, yes. Well, that's, that's part of this incredibly interesting story that I'm about, uh, to, to relate. <laughs> um, I would say that it was, um, uh, certainly after high school. And maybe early college uh, for me, if I'm remembering this at all correctly, that this uh, intensified. Um, I got uh, I got interested in well, I was interested in hot rods and and mechanical things and so forth. Probably early indicators of my interest in I guess we'd say engineering and um, and and automotive-like stuff, certainly go-karts, sort of automotive-like, and uh, would read books about magazines uh, uh, and see what other people were doing. And basically, uh, uh, I guess maybe to roughly describe a, a go-kart, a go-kart is absolutely a minimal uh, sort of vehicle. It's... Um, it's very small. It, it can only hold one person, one seat. Uh, there's an engine in the back, and the engine was typically a chainsaw. Uh, the chainsaw engine uh, would be approximately the right size, and a McCullough chainsaw was very popular, uh, at least when I was involved with uh, go-karts. And it would be a direct chain drive to uh, a solid axle. Uh, four rubber tires, no suspension. And um, so, so if you looked at, at, at a profile of the go-kart, uh, uh, let's say at, at one end, let's, let's say it's the left end, would be the back wheels, and pretty much directly over that would be the, uh, the uh, chainsaw motor uh, and a chain, uh, 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 like, a, like, let's say for a motorcycle, a chain from a small uh, sprocket on the output of the uh, engine to a larger gear at, uh, attached to the axle. And then uh, moving to the right would be a, a place to sit, a backrest and a, a sort of a padded uh, seat and something that would be the sides would hold, would come up a little bit around you as you were sitting there to kind of keep you from sliding back and forth too much. And um, and then your knees would be bent up, um, uh, and there would be an accelerator and a brake, and that w uh, and then of course front wheels um, would be there. Uh, had a, a steering um, a steering mechanism wasn't a wheel. It was more of a like handlebars in a way uh, with a shaft that went down to the front. And uh, and then would uh, move a uh, a uh, uh, move with both the front wheels so that you could turn the vehicle. They were very nimble and very quick, as a rule, but not not always incredibly fast because there was no transmission, uh, you, so you couldn't um, uh, like shift to a, a higher gear. I guess you would uh, could say. That was uh, pretty much what a go kart was. Um, uh, uh, one of their outstanding uh, characteristics was they were noisy. Usually didn't have much of a muffler on it, and I guess that's part of the uh, of the fun of it. And that uh, that uh, open exhaust was you know, a foot or two away from one's ears, uh, sitting there uh, just directly behind you, uh, behind the driver. 
Well, I got interested in this kind of stuff, mostly from magazines. Uh, turns out that there was uh, interest in Eugene, uh, as well as a lot of other places, on having uh, a place to uh, drive these go-karts. A parking lot was uh, maybe with it marked out, maybe with rubber tires to define the course, um, or painted on the, on the, uh, on the asphalt. And there was, um, there was one in Junction City uh, near a, uh, right at the Y between uh, 99 West and 99 East, uh, right behind a rather large uh, restaurant, as I recall. And another one was uh, associated with the Rexius Fuel Company. They, were, they sold uh, uh, fuel for uh, wood stoves, uh, sawdust, for example. I don't know what else they sold, but sawdust certainly. And um, they had a, an honor system uh, payment that you could run your uh, go kart on the uh, on the track, and uh, and uh, upon completion, uh, I uh, went there with um, family, Margaret, Stan, uh, for example. I don't remember Pat ever going. Maybe she did, but I don't remember. Uh, and uh, a friend of mine, Gary Waddington. So after being just enthralled with all this wonderful stuff that I had seen in magazines and, uh, and uh, actually witnessing a few go-karts buzzing around, uh, I uh, thought I would try to put together one of my own. Uh, there were catalogs available for the parts, for the wheels, the tires, uh, uh, so, uh, the, the part of the steering mechanism uh, um, was, was available. Uh, I was um, at early, early college uh, and I think that um, impoverished of course and so a lot of this stuff I really have no recollection of where all this money uh, came from I it just seemed to magically appear now that I look back at it uh, but it never really was a, a huge amount of money uh, not not at all uh, fairly modest because some of it was just kind of fabricated uh, from junkyard parts the motor uh, came from uh, the father of Gary Waddington, and it was a, uh, a rather uh, a rather big uh, chainsaw. It actually had two cylinders. Most of the the, the uh, chainsaws had uh, somewhat more expensive uh, chainsaw motors, but one cylinder. Uh, but this one had two, and. Uh, but it was free, and so uh, thanks to the generosity of uh, Gary's uh, dad, uh, that got mounted on the back of a set of pipes. I think it was this galvanized iron pipe that I used. I guess you could call it the frame. And on top of that frame were mounted uh, in the back were the bearings for the rear axle. Uh, and they were uh, mounted and, and, and uh, a sort of a bracket was welded onto that galvanized iron pipe and then the bearings uh, mounted on, uh, on, uh, on those brackets bolted on. Um, ordered uh, wheels and, uh, and tires, I think they were separate uh, as I recall. And, uh, and slowly, uh, bits, bits and pieces of it uh, came into existence until, and added to that uh, frame until the, uh, the thing was actually ready for a test uh, drive. And if I remember correctly, the test drive, the very first time that, uh, that I uh, rode it around, was uh, uh, from Gary Waddington's house. And I can't quite remember why that was the case. Why, why at Gary's rather than uh, the house on Jefferson Street where we were living at the time? Uh, which reminds me, a lot of the work was done in the garage uh, of the Jefferson Street house. And um, uh, it was a little bit of a family affair. I can't say that Margaret and Pat played much, but Stan certainly did. Uh, 
uh, mom and dad didn't, although mom was supportive. Mom uh, took me for some reason, I don't know why she drove, but took me out onto um, Highway 99 toward a little ways toward um, Corvallis. And uh, there was a motorcycle shop, and that's where I bought the uh, sprocket and uh, brake drum for the back wheels. It oh. just had brakes on the back. Uh -huh. And it was, oh, say, I suppose a good nine inches in diameter. And, um, and Mom was good enough to take me uh, out there. Why that happened? I wish I could remember why she did it. It was so kind of her to get involved in these goofy things. I, I don't think she had any personal interest in a go-kart, but her interest was probably more just because uh, we were we, we were having such fun with it, and uh, she was she was very supportive uh, of that. That's a that's a that's a neat memory of of, uh, of that happening. Yeah. Well, uh, so at, at, at Gary Waddington's house, finally got it all together and ready for a test run. And um, uh, where Gary lived, it was a pretty quiet um, uh, neighborhood. And uh, so uh, it, you, you started the, the uh, engine by pushing it, by, by a push start. And I think, as I recall, Gary gave me a push start on it, and, and the engine fired and um, I went around the block uh, probably uh, waking up uh, half the neighborhood uh, that morning uh, but it all worked fine and it turned and it stopped and it go it would go and uh, and it was a, sort of a triumph but one of the odd things is that because it had absolutely no suspension in it uh, it, it would uh, jostle jiggle bounce um, vibrate I guess uh, as it uh, went over little cracks on the street and your eyes would would um, sort of jiggle so seen and maybe glasses maybe the glasses actually moved you know because I wore glasses at the time too um, and and so everything was kind of a jiggly it was quite an experience no no safety helmet uh, I think OSHA would be horrified uh, today that uh, that we took our lives in our hands hands uh, for uh, uh, for that I don't recall discovering any major uh, issues with the go-kart that needed to be corrected maybe there was I sure don't remember any any uh, thing like that and um, began taking it for just for the fun of it out to uh, like Rexius oh took it up before that uh, near the house on Jefferson Street up on top of the hill College Hill I think it's called although I don't remember knowing that at the time but at top of College Hill was a great big water reservoir it was a big area so probably a block long I think at least the way I remember it um, and uh, took the uh, 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 go-kart uh, there because it was kind of hard to find a, a place that's suitable for for running it and uh, so thought about running it up on on there zipping around and a police car came up and um, Stan do you re were you there when that happened uh, I don't recall He's... being there but uh, I recall being up there uh, on some test runs which which I can okay I can mention in a, in a bit here Okay, well, uh, so the police came and um, and uh, were uh, kindly uh, suggested that uh, <laughs> I think we we're waking the neighbors up there as yeah. well. And uh, the way I look at it today, I, I really can't say I blame those neighbors. <laughs> but at the time, it was pretty. I was pretty indignant about it. Uh, but would you say you had something you remember about that? Oh yes, yeah. Well, yes, you were. Uh, there was a problem with the. Uh, fuel um, with the accelerator sticking, <laughs> ah, and uh, that's yeah, that's not good. Yeah, so I think it was either uh, very slow or very fast. I, it, you had two options, <laughs> mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, you had driven around and you were you were fiddling. I think you and Fred actually. I think. Fred was there. Yeah, the neighbor. Mm -hmm. I think Fred had some also some part in the construction, 
construction, didn't he? Or, or yes, did he? I think some. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, uh, but we were up at the uh, up up at that reservoir, as you said, it's very large, about a block long, or if not, maybe more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On maybe top. more. Yeah, and you got up to it um, on on cement stairs, and around it were these large uh, steel rails that were pipes of some kind. Mm -hmm. And that was to keep uh, all go-kart drivers from right. flying off the edge, which would have right. been resulted in uh, in sudden death, I suspect. If they... I think it would have, at least on the on the east edge of that, it was uh, 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 30 feet down to the ground. Oh, yes. It was, yeah, Possibly. it was quite a, yes, yeah. I suspect you're right. Quite a ways. Quite a ways down. Well, uh, the... The mission that I was assigned was to test <laughs> test out the repairs that you and Fred had done on the accelerator, and which consisted of you pushing me off and starting it, and then going around and making sure that the accelerator was I could either go, you know, the accelerator worked. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the repairs weren't quite as successful as, as you had oh. hoped. Uh -huh. <laughs> So we're on the west end facing south and yes. uh, and you pushed me off and off I went like a rocket <laughs> at a terrifying speed for me anyway. And yes. uh, so I got down to the south end and and make made a sharp left turn <laughs> and then uh, went a little ways further, maybe about a hundred feet maybe. And then made it. <laughs> I had to make a left turn because if I hadn't, I would have gone over that that drop uh, or through the, through the pipes. Uh, through the, <laughs> I don't know if the, yes. I don't know if I would have made it through the pipes or not. But anyway, so my choices were somewhat limited. So I made a left mm -hmm. turn, and mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, there were some young men. Uh, on an, in, with another go kart that were working on, that were stopped in the middle of the track. I don't know why. I think it just stopped, and so they were out trying to f fiddle around, trying to get it started. And <laughs> here I come, roaring down on them, and <laughs> they saw me coming and they scattered. They just ran for it. <laughs> I uh, abandoning, I, abandoning the their, yeah their the, yeah they're abandoning their go kart. They just took off, and oh, uh, no. I have no. I managed somehow to go around <laughs> around the uh, the stalled go kart, the whoever they were go kart, and uh, uh, I was trying to stop <laughs> the go kart from going any either hopefully stopping it or having it at least slow down. Well, at uh, uh -huh. at a young man's uh, uh, thinking, I, I I said, I know what I'll do. I'll stick my foot out. <laughs> oh, dear. There and, was a switch, you know. There, there was a, a little uh, toggle switch. Yes, there was a kill switch. On the right-hand side that you can turn the engine off. Yeah, a kill switch. Uh, of course. Kill uh, switch. Exactly. Of course, I, that completely, uh, uh, I lost thought, uh, rational thought at, at that moment uh -huh. because of course. Uh, all I was trying to do was just survive. <laughs> so uh, oh. I stuck my foot out and tried to stop it. That didn't work. So somehow I managed to get no. my foot back in. And <laughs> this is all the time. Oh. The, the Kogar is going probably 60, mile, 60 miles an hour across. I'm exaggerating, uh -huh. but it was going very fast. So I managed uh, that time. I was heading north <laughs> on this on this um, track, and I took uh -huh. a sharp left and another sharp left, and somehow I have no idea. Uh, maybe I remember the kill switch. I, th I think that's the only thing that would have stopped. Stopped You're it right. would have probably either ran out of gas or that kill switch. And so I yeah. think I finally realized I was flicked the. I got close to you and <laughs> and Fred, and I flipped that switch, and I think it stopped pretty yeah. close to where you were. And uh, <laughs> I bailed out of that, that thing as fast as I could, uh, and uh, you were uh, uh, instructing me as to uh, – uh, 
uh, you were you were not concerned about me uh, going off the edge or not being able to stop or running into other people or you were concerned about what the problem was with this go kart. <laughs> so you immediately uh, went to work on it. I I think I refused to get in again. I think either you or Fred tested it out again. And I think you managed to get it work. So that was. That was uh, one of the uh, just one of the many adventures that I had on that on that go kart. How 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 exciting! As a matter of fact, uh, uh, you, you know, I th here I think you've described one of the difficulties that engineers have. <laughs> I wasn't concerned about my 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 favorite little brother. I was concerned about this machinery, yes, yes. and and I'm afraid that may be characteristic of. Uh, <laughs> Uh, of, of an engineer who's getting, who's trying to solve a sort of a, an engineering problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm so glad that you survived uh, that uh, that excitement. Yeah. Uh, that's that's great. Well, that is great. You know, you and I will have to take a visit to that. Um, it's still yeah. there. We'll have to go up there yeah. and, and see what would have, in our mind, at that, at you know, at our mature age, what what would have happened if you know such and such yeah. had happened. I'm curious yeah. as it is to, uh, I remember it was like, it, was te it seemed like a, a hundred foot drop. I'm sure it wasn't that, but it was a long, long it's ways a down. Lot. Yeah. It was a lot. Yeah. Uh, in the, and in defense of that young, young man scooting along, I think it probably, those who aren't terribly familiar with, um, with go-karts, you're just a few inches off the ground. Oh, you're yes, really, yeah. really close to the ground on those things. Yeah. And, uh, and so the sense of speed, the sound of the engine and the you know, the wind blowing in your face and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, really, uh, e even even if you you weren't going a hundred miles an hour, <laughs> it sure felt like it. Yeah. So uh, so well, I, I would say that it was uh, that a, young man had every reason to be a little nervous. <laughs> yes. Well, it was like you said a, a two cylinder, gi well, it seemed like a gigantic chainsaw engine on it. Well, and it was pretty big. And you had manufactured uh, straight exit pipes. They were just yes. bolted on pipes to the uh, exhaust. Right. So yeah, no muffler. Yeah, no muffler. In fact, yeah. you burned yourself. I think you burned yourself on the pipes one time. It got quite they a bad would, burn. They they would get hot. Uh, there's no doubt they were they were fairly short. They were probably uh, oh slightly more, a little over a foot long. Yeah. Uh, and and actually, they were from uh, uh, the um, the little pipe you stick a oil dip uh, uh, where you test for the oil, how much oil you have in your car. Oh, I think it came from some some sort of Chevrolet, and uh, I got two of them, and they were curved really rather nicely uh -huh. that uh, that fit the need just fine. So so some of it, some of that effort was ingenuity. And that's an example of, uh, of ingenuity. I have, if I were to have that project today, I don't know that I would know how to go about doing it. I suppose you end up figuring it out. But, uh, but looking back at it, I think, wow, how in the world did that, uh, you know, unworldly, not, not a lot of uh, experience in the world, uh, get that to happen? Yeah. And, but, but it all happened. And maybe it's a combination of, uh, of inf inputs from, uh, from Fred Millette and, and Gary Waddington and, and my uh, dear uh, test, uh, uh, test driver, uh, <laughs> test uh, Stan. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, do Pretty you, exciting. Uh, backing up a little bit, if, if this, is this a good yeah. point to kind of uh, back up a sure. little bit? Sure. In, in sure. building this uh, go-kart, um, a mystery surrounds a, a lot of how that appeared at the at the house in the garage. Now I remember yeah. you working on it in the garage. Uh, did you right. weld? Who who did the welding of the tubing and all of that? Do you recall? I don't remember, but my bet I, I wish I did remember. Uh, uh, I really depend on other people for having a better memory, but it very well could be the folks down at Friendly Street Garage. Oh. Uh, uh. Uh, they've done they they did, they did a lot of good stuff for the 37 Ford and and so forth and they had the equipment and they had the knowledge. Mm -hmm. There's a, a place downtown uh, that uh, that helped me with the rear axle. It was a machine shop 
and and actually they did it for free. It was a, it was a minor to them it was a minor nothing job, but to me it was you know a, a huge job and so yeah. forth. So yeah. so there's some people that uh, helped uh, jeopardize uh, uh, people's lives uh, with, with <laughs> getting that uh, go kart uh, running. It, it, it's a little bit of a mystery to me, uh, in in many ways, how all that kind of came together. Well, yeah, not not only that, but there were some engineering feats that I think were almost impossible to accomplish. You had, um, I remember, it was a it was a warm summer evening, and you came in with a clay model of a carburetor that you wanted to. Ah that you were building for this go-kart. You're, can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, it, it was uh, actually what I wanted to do was to put another carburetor uh, on. It had one, and it, it was a two-cycle engine. And the two-cycle engine, the way they work, at least that one worked, uh, is that in the crankcase area, when the piston would move up, it would create a little bit of a vacuum in the crankcase. And so it would draw air in through the carburetor and through what they call a reed valve. It's like a one-way air valve that would allow air to be sucked into the crankcase. And then when the piston came down again, it would sort of compress that air-fuel mixture in the uh, crankcase uh, and, and then uncover a channel that, run, ran, that ran up along in the, on the, beside the cylinder and then blow that compressed air fuel mixture in to the combustion chamber. And then the piston would go in. Right. What am I doing? Oh, no, you're doing fine. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and so, uh, and, and so uh, if you have, if, if you really want to have your engine run fast, it means you move a lot of air in. And so having a, like a dual carburetor, like you, you did in, in the days of hot rods, um, uh, in my day anyway, uh, the, another carburetor on there would have enhanced it. It was a task that probably was, was, was over my head in being able to do. Not knowing that you couldn't do it, it was... Probably I don't, but I, you know, I don't know that I ever succeeded at doing that. Uh, I had, I think it was on a good path, and it may have worked, but it, but adding another carburetor uh, onto that engine uh, would have been, been, been kind of, kind of neat to be able to do. Yeah. But, uh, but it, it, it was a real challenge, and, and the clay model was. I was trying to figure out the airflow, uh, how the air would, would move. Uh, would it really uh, enhance the uh, the uh, power of the engine? That engine for a go kart probably had all the power it really needed. Um, we could I could bump off a little brother without too much <laughs> effort, without too much effort. Yeah. But that's that was that was one of the one of the things that uh, that there there were a lot of technical challenges. But that was part of the fun of it. At least a, a person that likes that kind of stuff, like I was, that that meeting those challenges and figuring out solutions was was the fun of it. It was more fun in many ways than driving it. Driving it was sort of the the, the point. I mean the the goal. Uh -huh. But the process of getting to that point was where, was where the fun was, uh, and and I've run into that in my life many times. Is the is the trip is is the most fun. The destination is nice, but it's but the trip itself, the process is is such fun. Um, how much time do we have, Stan? How, how are we doing? How much time? How long have we been recording? Oh, well, or do we have to go? Wh whichever. Oh, uh, I've got a, a couple of questions. If you if you have the time, I have a couple of questions. Sure, sure. We can do it right now. And then I, I, I do have uh, a little bit more that I can oh, wow. uh, cover. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, going back to you building the carburetor or designing, it, actually right. designing right. the carburetor for it. Right. Um, right. Uh, I mentioned that you had... You and Fred, as I recall, it was a, it was a summer evening, and you and, uh -huh. and Fred came into the house. You had this clay model. You had some cellophane uh, stuck onto the carburetor because you wanted to see how the uh, 
a mixture, what you thought might be a mixture or could be a mixture would flow through the carburetor. But you, uh -huh. you asked that he had a pipe, of course, which is he was probably smoking the pipe. Uh -huh. But you asked that to use his, if if you could use his pipe to blow smoke uh -huh. through this clay model with with the plastic um, window in it. So you could watch yeah. how it flowed through. Uh -huh. And uh, I, th I think Dad was somewhat amused and and pleased to yes. help out with the design. Yes, yes, uh, I, I think I think so. You also uh, built tried to uh, somehow you melted down aluminum, I think, and you were building a carb you were constructing a carburetor uh, uh -huh. out of this melted aluminum, and how you made the mold and how you did all that uh, i have no idea and how you did all that i have no idea the, the the nice thing about that was aluminum has a reasonably low melting uh, temperature they'll melt it a, a kind of a, a lo lower than uh, uh, than i'll say iron for example and that particular phase was a actually an intake manifold uh that uh, that was uh, that i was trying to construct to allow another carburetor to be attached to it oh, oh, I see. Uh, that's what that was about and and again I was uh, I really think most of the time I was in over my head with solving these problems and they get and then and then they would get solved I think however that as far as getting that other carburetor on there I don't think I ever successfully managed to do that uh, it was a wonderful try uh, and it was fun to do but i don't think i succeeded at it um that, that's my uh, memory too bill is that you you tried yeah. val valiantly to do that uh, but um, i remember your frustration in, in not being able to do that uh, because you, you well, very much wanted that that you didn't have much money didn't have very much money didn't have very much knowledge experience and that sort of thing but again that's part of the challenge of uh of uh, uh of it that made it uh, uh kind of fun yeah so um so i can't i can't say that i regret it it was a, it was a it was a good it was a good thing a fun thing to do yeah. and uh, yeah that was that was was there anything else at the moment that you had oh just other than i are you call it being painted all black uh, the the uh the whole go-kart itself was painted black yeah as I recall yeah, I think that the I, th I think that was a, a spray paint that the dad dad's store sold uh, the uh, spray paint in, in aerosol cans and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I think that's probably where that uh, came from. You bet, you bet. That's I, a, I didn't remember that. That's a, I oh I did the upholstery. I think I sewed up upholstery, sort of a leather uh, leather upholstery. Gosh, I wish we had a picture of that. Oh, thing. I do too. Yeah, I wish we too did. bad. Maybe, that's that's maybe. really too bad. Maybe Margaret has. She thought she might run across. Yeah, them. they might. They might pop up. Certainly, uh, pictures for the family uh, library stuff have yeah. popped up. Uh, a few of them. A few of them. Quite surprisingly. Yeah. Uh, almost out of the blue, it seems like. Yeah. Well, I wanted to talk about a. Uh, they would conduct uh, a go kart race that I went to. Yeah. And it was in Walla Walla, Washington. And I went with, I drove the Ford. The Ford would uh, had a big enough trunk that the go-kart would fit in the trunk. And even you could even close the trunk oh, and it really? would fit in there. No kidding. Yeah. I have no that's, idea. That's, yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, and it wasn't, it didn't also assembled. It wasn't very heavy. Uh, two people could easily uh, get it into the trunk and, and close the lid and, and it would fit in there pretty snugly. Um, and uh, so we took uh, the Ford to, of all places, Walla Walla, Washington, <laughs> which was a pretty good drive in them our days. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, uh, Gary and I got up to where the uh, track was uh, in Walla Walla and um, found out that I didn't have adequate uh, safety equipment that I could uh, participate um, in that. And looking back, I'm sure they were absolutely correct in that, although it was quite a disappointment. I mean, that was a, that was a long distance drive yeah. uh, uh, there. 
So on our way back, uh, Gary and I uh, stopped uh, for uh, for lunch at a, a, a little a little sort of mom and pop uh, restaurant. And somewhat af- sometime after eating it, I started getting really, really sick to my stomach. In retrospect, I think what had happened to Gary and me, uh, well, to me, not Gary, thank heavens, but to me, I got, um, I got uh, food poisoning uh, at this place. And I was, I, I was um, throwing up all the way uh, uh, from Walla Walla, as I recall, we went through Portland, and then I think Interstate Five was uh, located was was in place by that time. And driving down um, Interstate F- Interstate Five, heading toward uh, Eugene, and every few miles, Gary had to stop alongside the road, oh my and I would lean out and uh, try to throw some uh, some more of that that uh, hamburger or whatever it is that I uh, got oh my gosh. Uh, out and then and then wobble on down the road some more uh, and just uh, and, and just doing that I don't know how many times we stopped and and I was um, I got home and uh, and and I I swear I had never been that sick before in my life huh. um uh, I ended up actually in mom and dad's bed downstairs. This was in a Jefferson Street house, and um, and uh, had stopped uh, stopped throwing up. There actually a long time ago. There wasn't what there wasn't anything left. But I was so dizzy. If I would, I lay on my back uh, there in, in bed. I could barely move. But if I'd move my head the least amount, I'd become so dizzy the entire room would spin. Mm. And uh, you know, I don't remember going to the doctor with that. <laughs> Today, probably they they get up, they rent a high, helicopter to take you to a, a local hospital. There were ex, experts at food poisoning, but I don't think I ever went to the doctor with that. But obviously recovered. But it was. It took several days, and I, and I was going to school. I was in. I was at, in Corvallis, and um, so uh, I was. Um, uh, 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 I think mom. I, th- I think mom took me back to school uh, there, and I was. I was in really very marginal uh, shape uh, with that, and I doubt. I you know I don't know that I'd ever been that sick again that might have been the sickest i've ever been in my life and it was that poisonous uh i I, i'm convinced it was a hamburger one of the funny things about i guess funny things about that is for about a year afterward i couldn't look a hamburger (laughs) in the face i the i can you imagine a a guy in college and not being able to eat a hamburger yes (laughs) but the crazy thing about it is that cheeseburgers were fine Oh. And, and and but but a hamburger, uh-huh. I just couldn't do it. Uh, and then gradually, after about a year, uh, my phobia or whatever the world it was uh, faded. And today, uh, I can I can eat I can eat a hamburger with uh, uh-huh. without any issues. But there was a time I couldn't could not do it. So. I, I'm... Uh, Bill, I'm wondering. Um, you you said that you came. Uh, uh, Gary was probably driving the Ford, and you were you right. were very sick. Right. Uh, is that the time that Mom and I came up to Corvallis and picked you up because you were so sick, or was well, I think to get me back home? Yeah, yeah, I think that was the time to get me back because because uh, I was Mom took me there, and. Um, I wouldn't have a way to get back. There's no easy way to get back. So I could well imagine that you guys were good enough to come up and, and, and fetch uh, the wreck of uh, humanity that I was at that time. Yeah, I, I remember that trip up. <clears throat> Actually, I don't remember the trip up, but I remember going up with Mom to pick you up, and you were so sick. And um, on we were on uh, 99. Uh, right. And coming back home, and I remember laying in the back seat of what car was it? The Rambler, or probably the Rambler, I, Rambler. I think. But I was laying in the backseat of the Rambler, and I was watching the uh, 
uh, I was laying down and I remember uh -huh. watching the uh, telephone wires, um, yes. you know, flip along the yeah, out of the what, window. That's what you could see out of the windows from your angle. Yeah. Right. But, right. but I do remember you being so sick. And uh, there was, uh, is there anything else along those lines or? Hmm. Not that I can remember. Uh, what what I don't have a, a, a particularly clear memory of is, I, I think uh, uh, that school, the you know, the the uh, need to pay attention to school, and I'd accomplished what I wanted to. There was a, a go kart that actually would go around a you know a track, uh, and and so I've often wondered whatever happened to the go kart. Was it given to a, a needy child uh, someplace? What whatever happened to that? that thing i wish i knew um uh, i'm just curious uh, do you you don't happen to know do you uh i don't i remember uh so i'm thinking it was probably semi-abandoned when you went into the army i'm guessing right I, right i this was pre army i vaguely and i don't know if this is even true or not maybe pat or margaret could remember but i vaguely remember mm -hmm. it being up in the garage attic but that. Yeah, that may or may not have been the case. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll I, I'll try to remember to ask because I am just I'm just really curious what whatever happened to it. Yeah. Not that I want to change it any, but I'd just like to know what happened to yeah. it. So, yeah, well, That's just about the end of the of the things that, that I could recall offhand. Other things may pop up, and if they're important enough, I can uh, mention them in well, another interview. There's a, there's a big thing that I remember is. <laughs> <laughs> is uh now margaret has lots of memories of the go-kart so she'll uh i don't want to i i will not mention anything that she'll probably also bring up yeah, no no spoilers on that no huh? spoilers but i did want to ask uh -huh. there was a uh you suffered a a, a, a serious oh, knee injury a tragic accident i forgot that <laughs> right that when i bang my shin on a, on a park bench uh, either is your like either is your knee or your shin i thought it was your knee but uh, well well you're close you're, you're close it's thank you for reminding me of that one of the uh places that the city had established where you could run a go-kart was on the fair at the fairgrounds and they had sort of uh, outlined uh, the track it was semi sort of a circular sort of a, a little very short road track and bent back and forth and not just an oval and um uh I was zooming around, and for some reason, uh, they had tires outlining the track. And I hit one of the tires, and I don't recall the reason for it. Probably somebody else's fault. And I hit one of the tires, and it, uh, uh, on, on, uh, and it bent my wheel up. Uh, it was a solid axle. Uh, and it, so the left, excuse me, right front uh, wheel was not on the ground. Well, the, it was a solid it was still roll along because the uh, frame was was solid so it was rolling along on on three wheels the uh, the uh, front left and the two rear wheels were just fine uh -huh. so I so I was pulled off of the track to I guess you could call it a pit area and um, I reached down on the right hand side where the kill switch was and as part of the uh, uh, hitting that tire it stripped away the kill switch oh no well without a kill switch there wasn't <laughs> any way to shut the down the, the only i only discovered later one way to shut the engine off uh if you don't have a kill switch and that is you run into a <laughs> bench a park bench that's handy uh, uh -huh. there <laughs> and the park bench was just high enough uh -huh. well, I mentioned uh, earlier that uh, when sitting in the go-kart your knees are kind of bent up so kind of uh, uh, sort of uh, out in front of your ways but your knees are bent uh -huh. and so my knee uh shin was uh, i guess it would be about a foot and a half <laughs> off the ground roughly i guess uh, -huh. uh hit Oh, uh, the the, no. the go-kart oh. went somewhat under this bench because I couldn't stop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I tried turning, and I, the way I turned cleverly was the way that it wouldn't turn because the wheel wasn't <laughs> on the ground. And so I smacked into this oh, no. bench, uh -huh. and the thing, the thing that slowed me down there was my shin hitting this <laughs> bench. Yeah. It was 
it was, uh, and it and it was, uh, it it made a, 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 a damaged the skin. Uh, there's not, you know, a lot of, there's not a lot of uh, of skin over your shin, yeah. and it hurt like crazy. But the real thing that took the the impact was my knee, uh, the joint, the knee joint. Oh. Uh, it, what, what hurt, I suppose, the most uh, immediately was the shin where I hit the. Uh, the edge of the park bench, uh-huh. uh, but but later on, my knee itself was was uh, was impacted, oh, no. and it, it took it took forever. Naturally, we didn't go to the hospital in that case <laughs> either, and I don't know how we ever survived. I was the only one that they abused like that. Uh, I, it, it just it's, what don't you agree? It was just a, maybe it was a little different when when you you know be, you being quite a bit younger than I am. Maybe it was different by that time, and and mom and dad decided they wanted to invest a little bit of money into the medical care uh, for 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 the children. And and you got a little more medical care, but man, I'll tell you, it was uh, uh, it was rough being the oldest one. Yeah, going no. through uh, food poisoning, no hospitalization, <laughs> uh, practically breaking a leg. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, no, uh, no, no medical care. Just um, I, I think it was Vicks or or Van <laughs> Gay, something yeah, was, like that. Yeah, I think it was Vicks. Yeah. Yeah, well, so, so that was, well, actually, that was pretty well planned. So uh, you immediately realized something was horribly wrong with your wheel. So you headed for the for the nearest uh, picnic table to stop the, stop exactly. the go-kart. Exactly, and I discovered that the one way you can stop the go-kart with, <laughs> when you don't have a kill switch is to run, uh, crash your shin into a park bench. Smack right and, into the, uh, yeah. Well, that's very clever. It, it, Good thinking. It, it worked. Yeah, it, it it worked. That's uh, that's good thinking. Uh, <laughs> so so uh, I guess uh, you know I hadn't thought of it quite in this way, but the the um, the, the medical care uh, situation was it was really clarified in this little talk uh, with my uh, food poisoning and then uh, the breaking the leg. Uh-huh. And, uh, it, it was broken, by the way. It was really just sort of a. Oh, or you call like a dislocation or something. I I could I could barely walk on that with that knee and hurt. And then slowly, over a yeah. period of about a year or so, maybe yeah. about the time it took me to recover from uh, food poisoning, uh-huh. uh, was uh, I could I could finally start to be able to, to uh, walk. And you know, I'm a little surprised to this day that I didn't get arthritis in that knee yeah. with that that trauma. Yeah. And, and the trauma was it was fair to call it trauma. Yeah, I have no doubt. Yes. So, oh, yeah, thank you for reminding me of that. I, I wanted to include it. <laughs> well, I, I think those are the only two traumas: food poisoning and broken leg. So, yeah, well, actually, there's a few more that Margaret will mention. I I remember them, and uh, Margaret. But yeah, but they happened. It didn't matter because it happened to other people. Oh, it. Uh, you, you were uh, you were involved in the event, so. Uh, oh, oh, inju- injury wise, Margaret. yes. With Margaret, yeah. Oh, okay. You know, this is amazing. No wonder I have such an optimistic uh, attitude toward life. <laughs> I don't remember any of you the disasters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing ever bad happens. <laughs> yes, that's true. You do have very optimistic. Of course, maybe it's also because you have survived so much that you realize everything else is just gravy, you know? It's, yeah, it's, right, it's, right. It's, 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 it's all, uh, it's all uh, sliding downhill now. Yeah. Just, it's easy. It's easy pull. Yeah. Uh, but you're going to save some of this for Margaret, you're saying? Yes, yeah. Uh, yes, exactly, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a little that's, bit that's like... That's a good idea. I, I think it's a little bit like the uh, the soldier coming back from Dunkirk. You know, if, he's, if he survived Dunkirk, then, uh, then yeah. uh, bankruptcy and uh, getting run over by a truck is no big thing. Right. You know? uh, yeah, yes. That's, yeah, that's it. Eh. But yes, Margaret, uh, Margaret will have lots to share and lots of memories of the go-kart. Um, and uh, I, I will I'll look. I think we can both look forward to having hear Margaret's stories about. It. I don't know I, about Pat. I, I'd, I'd really, I think I'd really like to hear it. Yeah. Um, uh, because your points of view is just so neat to hear. Oh, I didn't know that, or I forgot that. <laughs> That'd be wonderful. Yeah. Good. Now I don't remember Great. Pat. Uh, uh, Pat was always wearing dark sunglasses and pretended not to know us. So I don't oh, around the go kart. So I don't know right. if Pat has any memories or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when she was a lady, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I think you're right. 
and and Margaret was a little girl. Yes. So. <laughs> Yeah, she'll. Uh, Margaret will tell you all sorts of things, including the uh, adventures with the uh, with the helmet that you made out of a, uh, a fighter jet pilot's helmet. Or, right. Yeah. Right. Right. It, you know, it's about the sh- probably it, it, it is as wide as her shoulders, I suppose. <laughs> uh, it must have been funny on her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'll be great. Okay. Well. Um, is, is there anything else that you want to include? Or any? I think that's it for this uh, episode. Okay. Well, with luck, uh, I'll, I'll turn this off then. It's uh, Now, for somebody that couldn't speak for uh, 20 or 30 minutes, we've gone, I know. <laughs> we've gone on to almost... What, what is it? Oh, well, <laughs> Tell it, me the bad news. It's, it's it? 50 minutes going on an hour. So uh, You're kidding. Good heavens. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, well, I will uh, uh, end it here then. Okay. Okay. And hopefully with luck, 